Have you ever wondered if it's possible to live in sync with your cycle? Do you struggle with a negative mindset around your period? Are you wondering if it's possible to be feminist and anti-birth control? We're going to explore these questions and so much more in the Managing Your Fertility podcast, because this is about helping you live a whole and full life. I'm your host and guide, Bridget Busacker, joining you in this journey of exploration related to women's health care, feminism, and fertility awareness. Are you ready? Let's get started. Alex, welcome back to the show. I'm excited to have you on and talking about motherhood today. Me too. Thank you so much, Bridget. So for those who have not listened to Alex's previous interview, you should. This is part two of this series. Um, Alex is a family nurse practitioner and fertility care practitioner turned stay-at-home mom. She homeschools her four boys, and she is passionate about empowering women with the knowledge for fertility awareness, joyful encouragement, and the dignity of motherhood. And we'll definitely be sure to tag her website and her Instagram so you can follow her in the show notes. Alex, welcome. I want to jump right in. This is part two. We're talking more about joyful motherhood and just the the movement that you created online. I mean, you have Gram for Good, you have the Joy Mama movement. Why did you start this blog and this and these movements, actually both of them, um, to encourage mothers and, and honestly, just to encourage all women, really, because Gram for Good and the Joy Mama movement, I think, really just speak to the hearts of all women. Oh, thank you so much, Bridget. Thank you. No, honestly, I, I, I actually... I started it for myself. Like, I feel like with a lot of writers, you know, this is like how things start. And when I, um, after my second son was born, I started just blogging and, um, the whole idea of joy. I have a post about this, but I remember, um, finding one of my mom's journals and her just talking about the joy of having me and my sisters. And that was so, Um, it was just so powerful to me, like to read my mom's words that she's like spoke that about her own kids. And so I think that inspired me that I just wanted to keep a record of things that were helpful to me in motherhood to be able to help other moms. So it really just was an outlet for for me and to just help other moms. And and as, as it grew, and as I started using it to create, you know, different, different certain guides and templates and book lists and things like that. I just really hung on to the whole idea of, um, you know, having to choose joy and why that's so important as a mom for ourselves and like things that we can do to help us. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, no, that's great. I I think it totally does. I think I want to dig into a little bit more with this joy. Like, why is it so essential to our vocations as wives and moms? I think we hear this word and we hear happiness a lot and, you know, just, they get mixed up a lot, you know, and it's confusing to think like, okay, well, what, what are we supposed to be living out? Is one a virtue? Is one not like, and there's a lot of conversation around basically erasing suffering, erasing anything uncomfortable, erasing people in your life that are uncomfortable and not really grappling with like what it means to live in joy and to embrace the suffering that goes along with it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this. Yes. Joy. It like when it comes down to the actual like Christian meaning and just, you know, especially as Catholics, like it's such a depth to understand joy. And I mean, I'm not like an expert on all of the meanings and everything, but um, just from my own experience and things that I've learned and studied, it's not an exterior, like you were saying, you know, bubbly, happy, like this is, you know, peppy and joyful. Like that's not really the meaning that we're, that we're going for. And when we talk about it, it's joy is this like deep interior understanding and acceptance of the joy of the gospel and the joy of like who we are as Christians and especially as women. And so it's really, when I talk about being like a choosing joy or being joyful in situations, it's an interior disposition that ultimately, like you can think of our lady, um, you know, Mary and how she's like the Annunciation, the fiat, like that's like the initial joyful mystery. So I always think about that. Like that's really where that joy originates. And, um, and that's, that's really, that's really what joy is, is like knowing, knowing that we have like the joy of the gospel within us. And that's like our ultimate, the virtue of hope, like that's our ultimate calling. Um, And so knowing that it can affect our exterior disposition of yeah, like being an external smile or, you know, happiness because of that interior disposition. So that's, that's what I think about. There's a Mother Teresa quote where it says, um, joy is the net to catch souls. 
And so mm -hmm. I kind of love, I love those, I love Mother Teresa and her quotes. And so I think about that too. It's like, well, if we have this truth and this knowledge, especially as women of just knowing who we are as Christian women, um, then yeah, that can be a way where we are exteriorly catching souls and, and it leads us to, you know, smile and all those things. So that's kind of like part one. And then when it comes to, you know, in all situations, like you were saying through trials and through suffering, you know, no matter what's going on crazy around us, we can still have that interior ability to choose joy and to choose this inner peace, no matter when other things through suffering and through craziness and through situations. So I think that's kind of like the goal that the goal that I'm going for with sharing this message. I really love that. And I think that emphasis on that it's interior, that it's not this exterior thing like, oh, if you buy this, if you have this, if you create this, like this will make you happy. It's it's an interior abiding joy. And it's something that comes, like you said, from the joy of the gospel through Christ, that we have this so deep within us and a part of us that no matter what's going on outside of us and around us, we can tune in and tap into this space. And that this is where that peace comes from. It's not something external that we're grappling for and we're grasping for and we're hustling for. It's something that um, is, is cultivated through the silence, through relationship with the Lord and just understanding ourselves and who we are. And I think that's something that so often gets missed, especially culturally in the United States, we're so focused on consumerism. And if I have this thing, this will make me happy. If I do this thing, this will make me happy. If I experience this thing, this will make me happy. And, you know, the idea of simplicity or slowing down or tuning into ourselves and, and cultivating something deeper. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that doesn't, that doesn't sell, you know, coats and shoes and travel and experiences, but that's the thing that grounds us and who we really are and how we're supposed to live. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. It's it, absolutely. Yes, exactly. Cause when you really think about it, it's like why, no matter what we have, or like you were saying all these things, I mean, we, we have the joy of the gospel. We, we have a reason to smile like peace, peace begins with a smile. Joy begins with who we are from the inside. And so that's, that's the message. And, and it is available to everybody. It's available to all of us actually at any moment, really. It's just our choice. It's our choice to choose that. And that's, that's like what, you know, God allows us in those moments. And so, yeah, yeah. The it's anybody can be a joyful mama. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so I, I'm wanting to get into motherhood a little bit more because this is something that I think we see a lot of fear around. Um, and there's a lot of, I think anxiety to, I mean, there's just a, a pushback and a pullback away from this idea of having a vocation of motherhood, because I think, you know, um, oftentimes it, it's painted in a way that it's a very negative, hard, terrible thing. Um, and I think that's on a spectrum, you know, someone might say like, oh, I've never heard that it's terrible, but you know, someone else could say, yeah, I definitely have seen that it's not exactly the most fun job that I could ever have. Um, and I think there's also some aspect to, um, depending on where you read and what you look at. And, you know, there's, there's so many voices online talking about motherhood. I think some don't exude and show the joyfulness. They show the messiness as a way to connect, but then they're, they're just, they're pieces of the story. And I think in those pieces of the story that we receive and we see, it can sometimes really create a, a disconnect for us of what is motherhood. Um, and is it for me? You know, um, how would you, address this? I mean, really, I know this is a big question, but like, you know, what, what would you say to someone who's just fearful of motherhood and seeing these things? Cause you know, we've talked about this before. Like there's a lot culturally going against mothers. Oh my goodness. This is such a great question, Bridget. It's such a great question. I'm trying to think, I think there's so many things I would say. I think, I think number one, we have to kind of like talk about like the online world and then like, you know, reality too, like in two different ways. Um, I think for somebody who's maybe fearful. I honestly, as great as, as great as all of the online things are, I think number one, I would just start with maybe having conversations with moms, um, that we know in, in real life and kind of, um, talking maybe even like experienced moms. And when you really get to the heart of, of mothers, I mean, mothers are just amazing. <laughs> like we, it's just incredible that as women, we, can create new life and that we can give new life. And when you really get down to talking to the heart of a woman, um, yeah, there's going to be 
a million messy moments in any life, in any vocation, I mean, in anything, you know, and there's, there's always messy behind the scenes. And, um, but when it comes to, you know, being a mom, I mean, you're, you're, it's the ultimate vocation of sacrificing your life for another human being. And no, no mom is really at the end of her life going to regret, you know, any time that she spent with her, with her baby or, um, things that, just ways that she has things that she's, that she's done. I think what I'm, what I'm trying to point out is that a lot of these fears um, are wor worry, I guess, worry and fears can kind of just be um, a lot of in the dark and like not, okay, sorry, you're going to have to edit this whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is like, ba basically what I'm trying to say is that um, I think you, you, you really have to, you really have to talk through your fears. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Isolation and the devil's going to get women in isolation. And a lot of these fears can be overcome through conversation and through real one-on-one -on -one conversations with moms. And when you really get to the heart of, of mothers, um, you know, it's, it really is a, a joy to be a mother. And, um, I, I would just really want to sit down and ask and talk through, talk through, this woman's specific fears. And I think through verbalizing them and through actually talking about, okay, what am I really afraid of? You know, I'm afraid of, you know, the whole giving up my career. I'm afraid of not hitting this milestone. Like what is the fear? And I just would really want to identify that and like talk her through that and be able to talk to other moms and say, okay, you know what, the end of my life, like I was afraid of this, but really like, this is what my child ended up this is what the, the ending story was. And, you know, all the things I was afraid of, you know, this is, this is what ended up happening. And, um, and so I think that that's like one side of the, of one side of the coin to go through that question. And then the other side is, um, you know, just being really careful of what we consume, like you were saying, you know, seeing different things online. Um, and I think if you're not a mom yet, it can be, it can be really confusing, so I guess it's just more so, you know, who, what, what is goes going back to, again to like, what is the fear and, um, and let's help kind of like pick apart, pick that apart. And motherhood in that sense can just be a reflection of, you know, any other, anything else in life. I mean, you, you know, you can choose to see the beauty in the, in that vocation. I mean, motherhood is just like such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful ultimate vocation of when I say ultimate means is like, it's you're, you're doing something that only women can do by giving your life to another human being. And so of course it's going to be tough. Of course there's going to be hard and messy moments, <laughs> you know, but there's also just going to be such great joys. So. Yeah. As you're saying that it really gets me thinking about, you know, how much our mindset is a part of this and, and what we tell ourselves and where, like you're saying, what you're looking at online, what you're reading, who you're talking to, who you're consuming does impact the way in which you think about it. Um, there's something called upper limit problems. This is something I'm learning in my business coaching and um, the big leap by Gay Hendricks is a book that discusses this more, but I just want to like read a little snippet of this. Cause as you're talking about this, I think this is like speaking to this area. Upper limit problems are reference to the ways in which our minds and bodies desire to return to equilibrium. So basically the status quo, like I just want to get back to what I know and this is what I know and this is feels comfortable. Um, and upper limit beliefs um, impact money, joy, success, and wired in the subconscious. And upper limits challenge those experiences when you're trying to do something new. You're going to keep running into these like these breaking points where you're just like, okay, um, I want to go back to the status quo. I don't like feeling uncomfortable. This doesn't feel good. And I think um, a lot of times we want to minimize like the li upper limit problems. And this is something I'm, I'm learning right now, but as you're talking, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is totally making me think of this as I'm learning this myself. Because I think when you're in that space where there's opportunity for growth, it's like, Nope, I want to stay. I want to be comfortable. I want to stay where I'm comfortable. Um, and I think that's where like that mindset work is so powerful to really get at like what you were addressing. Like, what are those thoughts? What are those fears? I know the metanoia Catholic um, coaching program, they have the, the metanoia process, the thought recon, that you have to just write out all those thoughts. Like what, what is related to it? What's like running through your head? What are those scripts that you're just running and you don't even know that they're going on? Um, and I think that process as a, as a practical aspect to what you're saying, like if there's something that needs to be worked through, that can be a really great process 
to go through and I can link to that. Um, because even just as I'm doing it, there are things that come up where I'm like, I didn't know I thought that way. And I think like we are so bombarded by information and it just forms our thoughts and we don't even think that much about it. And we just get lost in, you know, oh, I'm never going to meet this milestone, this goal, this thing, this is going to be too hard. I can't do this. Um, those are things that can hold us back from some of the most amazing experiences of our lives. I mean, like you said, motherhood is hard. I mean, there are moments where I'm like, am I going to hit that point where I've made it? Where I do, where I just feel like I've made it, you know? And then I can talk to my mom and she's like, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, whatever. I just do the best I can. Like, I don't feel like I've made it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you seem to have done so well. Like you've raised all of us kids. Like we're alive. We're thriving. Like what? Right. And I think that just that reality that like, we're human, like we're going through this process and we can't do it in isolation. And, you know, just exactly as you said, the devil thrives in trying to pull us away in isolation and making us think that we are totally alone. And that's when it's dangerous. It doesn't allow us to see the opportunity we have to grow and to embrace the opportunity for motherhood. And this, this wiring that we have, I mean, you've spoken so beautifully to this too, in, in the series you did with Leah Darrow, of just like how we are made so uniquely as women, you know, whether it's spiritual mother, motherhood or physical motherhood, the, this is a part of us as women, and this isn't a bad thing. It's okay. not really a question for you. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm just leaving that hanging. Like, here yeah. you go. <laughs> no, my job. Absolutely. Bridget. You're so right. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. How can it, it's, it's a thousand and one percent, not a bad thing. It is like such a beautiful thing. And like, yes, this just goes into like, you know, a, a little bit of that, like theology of the body, but, but like that whole, like, this is how we're created as women, like within the written of our body. And I know, like, obviously, you know, we talk about fer fertility and fertility awareness. It's like, this is why this is so important because it just allows us to understand like, you know, being, being a mother and yeah, giving physical birth too, but just all of us being a woman and, and, you know, being a mother in any of those avenues, like you just said, it's the way it's what we were created to do. It's what we were, it's how we were created. It's how we're created. Like you fight anything, anything that you go against the natural like way. I mean, you know, I'm sorry, but that's, that's, you know, it's, you're going to have a harder time finding joy because it's not the way that God intended. It's not the way he created it. You know, he created us for, for him and, and he has a purpose and intention for all of that. And so, it, you know, working with him is just going to make everything easier and more joyful. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, it really is. I think for, I think for so many of us, you know, you know, grappling with our faith and grappling with, okay, like, how does this really work? I mean, it's really easy to think, okay, if I leave God over here, this is going to work well. And I'll just like check in every once in a while. But really when it's coming into that fullness of understanding that God made us this way, this is not a mistake. This isn't an accident. And that there are opportunities for us to really grow and lean into our woman and lean into the feminine genius. Like this is where, this is where empowerment lies. This is where understanding and living out our own genius and our, you know, unrepeatable dignity and just who we are, our mission. I mean, it's, that's kind of like the secret sauce, <laughs> really, you know, it's like, it's not buying one more thing. It's not doing one more thing. It's not participating in some other course. It's really leaning into who we are. There's work in that. I mean, there might be counseling involved and spiritual direction and a lot of other aspects of, of healing, but that that's all worth it. And I think that's a huge part sometimes in that process of becoming a mother that, that we realize that we need, or even just in the spiritual motherhood that we realize that, you know, there's so much opportunity for growth, for healing and for living out our calling, which is huge. And this is language that I think sometimes for people, it's like, what, what are you even talking about? I don't even understand with this. And I think, um, sometimes I wish there was like a glossary for like, Catholic terminology when it comes to women, like here, here is what we mean when we say the feminine genius, or when we say, you know, um, living out your calling, because I think it often is so confusing. We're told like, we need to be like men when really like embracing our motherhood is a gift. And again, it's not just physical. Like I think so often we just think, well, I don't, you know, I don't want kids or I'm not married or like, I don't know that I'll have kids or I struggle with infertility. Like we are all wired for mothering. Yeah. Like that's a huge thing to, to say, and then to live out because that is not culturally what we hear. We don't hear that about women. Maybe in other cultures, it's absolutely possible. Um, but in, in Western society, that is not a thing. Right. Right. It's so true. And I think that's why, like when you're going back to like talking about the fears around motherhood or all of that, it, it's so important to pay attention to, 
you know, to specifically it's work to specifically seek out what are the, what are the things that we're going to, to like influence us positively for motherhood. And I mean, I'll say it right here that there are positive influences. I mean, look at the number one mother, Mary, <laughs> you know, like we can turn to her for getting inspiration to, you know, and she went through the ultimate suffering. You know, when you talk about like fears of suffering, I mean, she had to go through the the greatest suffering ever, like, you know, with her son, Jesus. Right. And so she was still able to, to walk through that and then look what the Lord did. Look what the Lord, look what the Lord brought out of her, you know, brought out of that suffering, like the greatest glory. And I think that's why this is so important for us as women to kind of like turn toward that and think about who are these, who are the models, who are the models in our life that we're looking toward as women and as, and, and as mothers, you know, because, um, that can really cloud a lot of our fears and it can make us more anxious. And, um, you know, they're, there to overcome the fear that there are positive influences out there. Like I said, Mary, like going to her and, and, and women who are going to just speak that, that truth about your way you were created and the, the ways that God is going to use your story and your motherhood. And I think that that is just really important to bring to our awareness because a lot of times when we're going about motherhood or discernment in motherhood or overwhelm in motherhood or all of those other fears. Um, you know, if we don't pause and think about, okay, where's this root coming from? Like, what are the messages that I'm seeing or what are the models that I'm looking toward? Why am I feeling this way? It's really easy to then just switch it and then be like, okay, wow, actually there is, there, there are joyful things that I can look toward, you know? Um, and, and that's really, that's really a great hope. And that's kind of like a lot of what I try to do through, through my writing and, and things to help women, because I know those, those have, that is, those are things that have really helped me to just remember that, oh, there's, there's, there's good answers out there. There's good, you know, joyful things that I can, that God has, um, put in there that we can use to help us, you know, cause he doesn't, he's not like leaving us by ourselves to figure this out. You know, he's given us, he's given us plenty of good role models and, you know, the saints and there, he, he's given us all the tools, you know, um, but he just lets us, of course, you know, free will, we all know this, but you know, he just, he, he wants us, he wants us to go through that journey of, finding it and searching for ourselves, you know, which seems like, why, why don't you just tell us, like, give it to us. But you know, it's all to lead him closer. It's all to lead us closer to him. So the, the joy in the journey is cliche, but that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think two things that are coming to mind. One, I think what you said about, you know, who are you looking to for your models of motherhood? Mm -hmm. So important because if you are looking to people that don't really live out motherhood, in an authentic way or embrace motherhood or embrace like authentic femininity. And yeah, there's a lot there's, that's a loaded phrase, but really truly like embracing like who we are as women and embracing that and not trying to be like little men and trying to compete in a way where everything just gets grayed out. Like we are meant to live in color and to live out our own genius is living in color and to recognize that we each have our own unique calling. And that's really important. And that's necessary for for this time and age, like if you're, if you're alive and you exist and you're breathing right now, you were made for this time and age, like right now and to serve and you have a particular mission. And if you feel like you're not living it, it's time to discover it because you are essential to this world. Like there is no one made on, uh, you know, by mistake, like everyone is made on purpose. And I think, you know, secondly to that, um, is I think as we're talking about suffering in motherhood and, you know, the joys and the ups and downs, I think sometimes when people hear, Catholic or Christian motherhood, they're thinking, oh my gosh, it's like, I have to be a stay-at-home mom. It's, it's only a stay-at-home one. One, that's an offensive phrase because that is a huge job to be a physical mother and to be staying at home full-time with your kids. That's a full-time job. That does not mean that I'm pooping all over women who work outside of the home and are raising children. We are all meant to have space here because that would like by picking one of these camps or glorifying one of them means that we're also then leaving out women who are struggling with infertility and longing for a child or another woman who isn't married, but is beautifully living out motherhood spiritually and nurturing other women, mentoring other women, but she doesn't physically have children. And so I think like when we pull back and see just the infighting that we 
are creating by trying to say like, you know, this is the best kind of woman, or this is the best kind of woman. Like we are all called to mother and that mothering is going to look very different depending on the vocation that we are called into and living out. And there might be a, you know, an opportunity or a, a, a need for pivoting. Like you might realize like, gosh, I'm not living out the calling of my motherhood, or I'm always stressed out, or I'm always, you know, fill in the blank and there's something going on here. And I know always never. So maybe usually am this way, <laughs> but you know, really these are opportunities that we all have for metanoia for, for being continually called on by Christ to change. But I think by trying to put women again into these little boxes, you know, it's like, okay, first we figure out, okay, I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't need to be like a man. I'm not a man. Okay. Now I can be a woman. And then you get in like next layer and it's like, okay, well now this is the only way to be a woman. Well, right. we're, we're okay. We're going backwards again. We're kind of doing the same thing as we were. If we were just saying everyone should be men, like, no, you're still called to live out your own unique calling. And that, right. that is going to look different in different seasons. And I think your story is such a beautiful example of that, where you are a, nurse practitioner, you're a fertility care practitioner, right. stay at home mom, like you had these different transitions and it's embracing these seasons, realizing God isn't going to leave you. Mm-hmm. Like there might be a time that you're called out and then called into something else. I know Joanna Gaines of Magnolia of the chip and Joanna Gaines talks about this in her book where mm-hmm. she was called to start her store. And then she felt this calling that God was saying, like, I need you to pull back and be with your kids right now. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh my gosh, I love the work that I'm doing. Okay. She did that. And she talks about how that was the best decision that she ever made for her family. And then it ended up being the best decision for her business too. But in that moment, she could not see it and she just had to trust. And that's scary. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Oh yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard. It, it And it's, and, and, and I would never want to, I mean, I've been there. Like I've totally been there. I've only been a mom for eight years, but I have been there and I would never want to, I'm, th- I'm so thankful for all the journals I kept because I can go back and just see, see that those struggles and read them. And I would never want to like, just minimize a woman's struggle in this because, you know, your identity as a mom, like it, it's, it's a very tender thing. And it does, there is a reality where, you know, when you, when you become a mom, I mean, you know, it's this, it's this amazing, amazing vocation, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a a sacrifice. There's a sacrifice. There's an absolute sacrifice, but there's beauty in that. Like it's meant to be, it's meant to be that way. And so there's, there's a reason that there's a grappling and a struggling with that. And, um, and that that's okay. It goes back to what we were saying, like the, the joy in the journey, like figuring this out, like that, that is okay. And God, God wants that. And I would never want a mom to feel like, alone and that and like why am I feeling this way what is wrong with me you know I mean because I felt that and I and I know I know those feelings and you know I just would would want moms to know that um you know there's there's that's normal like it's completely normal to go through these seasons and stages and you know asking that question of like wait what is the best way to be a mom like that's completely normal and that there's a lot of that's healthy to ask those questions actually because it's just the way that god is the the way that god is just trying to continually reveal what he wants to do with you know what plans he has for you in your motherhood and um and it's okay to like ask those questions of is it better for me to work outside the home is it better for me to be a stay at home mom like those are all good things to compare yourself to yourself and, and ask those questions. Um, and I think when I look back on my own journey, I, I see, you know, how hard I was on myself asking that and what, how, how, you know, how much of a struggle those questions were. Um, and I think if I could go back, I would just, you know, just be a lot easier be a lot easier on myself and just say, this is normal, you know, talk to a mom who's 20 years older than me. And she asked herself the same questions, you know, after every baby she had, there was new decisions she had to make and, you know, her family's changed and, and that that's all, that's all okay. And it's, it's just, it's all okay. And no one is going to answer those questions for your life, but yourself. And that's hard to, it's hard to accept that as a mom, especially as a new mom, <laughs> it's hard to accept that. And it's confusing. And, um, but that that's a process and God, God designs it that way because he like, like we keep saying, like he wants to, he wants to grow closer. He wants to reveal those joys, you know, with him and you. And so, you know, each, each woman's going to go through her own process, her own process in that, 
And, and back to what you also said, Bridget, of like, you know, not putting ourselves in camps and not like, you know, wait, what should I be doing? I mean, it's so it's completely there's no one right way. I mean, all we have to do as soon as you get those thoughts, just that is so dumb. There, look at the saints. There are a million different types of saints. There are a million different types of moms. You know, there's a million, you talk about family size a lot when it comes to fertility awareness. I mean, there's a million different sizes and shapes of families. And so this is what it is with motherhood. And I think that's what I think we have to constantly, that's the, that's the positive message that we can send to moms that like, it is okay that you look so different from this other mom because you're supposed to, we're all supposed to, you know, there is not one, that one right way. But then lastly, I'll say at the same time, it's okay to ask those questions and, and wonder, okay, well then how am I supposed to do that? And I think that that's, that's what I've come to understand of, of finding those joys, um, finding those joys because it's going to be so individual to you. So I I really, I really hope that that helps. I hope that that gives like mom's hope of just, there's so much solidarity there. And, and as soon as you start feeling the not solidarity, like that's not of God, you know, and, and that's not, that's not the, the joy that we're talking about. That's really great. This is a great way to close out because I think this has just gotten like, you know, walking us through a story, you know, and just helping us shape and understand like, okay, what does motherhood look like? Because I think, I don't know, like before becoming a mom and even in my like new stages of motherhood, it's like, I'm kind of looking for the answers. It's like, it would be so great to have an answer, but that's just not what it's about. It's about a journey. And like you said, like, this is a process of, of becoming, it's not like, you know, once you you know, get into your career or you get married or you have your babies or whatever, like you're just done. You've arrived. There's never arriving. We arrive when like God willing, we get to have it. Like that's it. I know. So otherwise like it's a journey. So I love just like the permission that you've given and just saying like, ask those questions. It's okay. And also like, you know, remember like there isn't one way to do this. So don't, you know, as, as my baby's starting to cry here, (laughs) there's, there is no one way to do it. So Thank you so much, Alex, for being on. This has been so great to like hang out with you. Here's that joyful cry. (laughs) (laughs) And just, I'll be sure to tag your account so people can follow you and just see what you're doing with the Joy Mama movement and also with Graham for Good and just the different pieces that we've talked about. Wow, that's our cue. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends and help expand the conversation around women's health. If you'd like to learn more about fertility awareness, visit www.managingyourfertility.com for more information, resources, guides, and so much more.